Well, there is a lot of buzz around COP26, climate change, carbon emission, leaders meeting in Glasgow and talking about climate commitments. Confused what this is all about? Well, we have got you covered. World governments have met for almost three decades every year to discuss and work on climate change. Just to give you some perspective, under the United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change or the UNFCCC, every country has to avoid climate change under a treaty and find ways to reduce greenhouse gases globally. So COP stands for Conference of Parties under the UNFCCC. It's taking place in Glasgow this year after a gap of a year due to the pandemic and it's the 26th meeting. It starts on October 31st and will go on till 12th of November. But you must also be wondering that world leaders are also talking about Paris agreements and they are also talking about COP. So what is the difference? Why do we need both? Well, Paris Agreement was signed by 196 parties in 2015 in COP21 when nations committed to reduce global greenhouse emissions and to limit temperature increase to 2 degrees while pursuing efforts to limit heating to 1.5 degrees Celsius. These goals are legally binding. Now to meet these goals, countries have set up non-binding national targets or nationally determined contributions. These are non-binding as I mentioned, and include climate-related targets for greenhouse gas emission reduction and some policy and measures taken by the governments as well. Paris Agreement also had a clause where countries could modify those commitments in order to be in line with technological and environmental changes over years. So now, countries are being urged to revise their NDCs before COP26 in line with the 1.5 degree Celsius target as they are not considered to be adequate a lot of countries are still to come up with fresh NDCs. So COP26 is just not about 1.5 degrees Celsius. Many aspects will be discussed. Climate finance, the first of them, is the money provided to poor countries from public and private sources to help them cut emissions. Poor countries were promised that they would receive around $100 billion a year by 2020. Second is the phasing out of coal usage. There is a lot of push for that. China, for instance, is already working on this currently as we speak. Third, methane emissions. They have been the biggest issue. This gas can heat the planet 80 times more than carbon dioxide. It is emitted during the production and transport of coal, natural gas and oil. Methane emissions also result from livestock and other agricultural practices or land use as well. Lastly, carbon trading, a mechanism by which rich countries could hive off some of their carbon reduction to developing countries. There have been a lot of conflicts on implementing of carbon trading rules, so this can be taken up. Now, where does India stand as far as climate change, NDCs and COP26 is concerned? There were recent reports suggesting that India will update climate NDC ahead of COP26. India's present NDC submitted in 2015 consists of three main elements. An economy-wide emissions intensity target of 33 to 35% below 2005 levels, electric power capacity target of 40% install capacity from renewable sources by 2030, of course conditional to international support, and creating a carbon sink expansion project of creating an additional carbon sink of 2.5 to 3 billion tons through additional forest and tree cover by 2030. Now remember, India does not have net zero carbon emission target. And this was discussed recently at a climate summit where India did not agree with the language on net zero emissions and urged G20 nations to bring down per capita emissions to global average. Lastly, where do things stand right now? Well, a climate tracker that was published in September 2021 ranked countries based on rating the policies and actions taken by the government to achieve its targets, the net zero target, any domestic target, the climate finance commitments and land use and forestry policies. And they put countries in five categories, namely critical insufficient, highly insufficient, insufficient, almost insufficient, 1.5 degree Celsius Paris Agreement compatible. Now, India falls in the highly insufficient category along with Canada, China, UAE, Australia to name just a few and only the Gambia falls in the compatible list.